Hello, heroes. This is Stan Lee, and I've got a rare treat for you today. Not only is he a good friend of mine, but he's one of the top names and one of the top talents in the comic book business. So without any further ado, my buddy, Bob Kane. Glad to have I you here, I thought you Bob. were Bob Kane. I'm Stan Lee. <laughs> well, I'll settle for that, too. Okay. Bob, for the few people who come from another planet who may not know what you do, what is it that you're known for? you got to be kidding. I am, of course. Well, uh, originally I created Courageous Cat. <laughs> that was that animated show yeah, an you animated did, right? Yeah, an animated cartoon. Well, I think when I was 18, I tripped across a character called Batman. Bat? How do you pronounce B -A it? Bat B -A -T Man? B-A-T-Man. It was called Batman by Robert Kane. Uh-huh. In yeah, 1939, when I was three years old, Stan, that's when I created the Batman. I'm now 42 on my good days. Anyway, Batman is my claim to infamy. Yeah, I always thought it was the cat, and Batman sort of came along accidentally. But okay, we'll talk. How about if we talk about Batman instead of the cat? Would okay, you like well, to do Batman that? was first. Cat, cat came later. That's Bat the cat, cat came after the Batman. Absolutely right. Now you seem to be fingering a book here, which I have a feeling if I twisted your arm, you might be willing to talk about a little bit. Well, right? is this a commercial for me, Stan? Before we talk about it. Okay. Before we talk about okay. it. Okay. Let me just ask you this. <laughs> How did you get into comics? Have well, you always wanted to be a comic book artist? Writer? Actually, no. <laughs> I wanted to be a salesman. No, I, I wanted to be a truck driver. No, actually, when I was a kid, I was a doodler. Uh -huh. I lived in the Bronx in New York. I was a poor kid, very poor. And in fact, we were so poor, I used to wear my sister's hand-me-down dresses. No, we were poor, and a tough neighborhood, too, I lived in. Must have made quite an impact with the dresses. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, in those days, you know, it was a little... Uh, at any rate, Stan, it was a short run from the subway to my home. It was a tough neighborhood. Uh -huh. Thank you, Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, I was always doodling on the sidewalks in New York and my school books. I loved cartoons my whole life. My dad was a printer for the Daily News, and he used to bring home the Sunday... Uh, comics to oh, me. Oh, really? Yeah. The Daily News Sunday comics? Absolutely. He was yeah. a printer. And Dick I'd have Tracy and Orphan Annie and all of Absolutely. Yeah. Mutton Chef, Popeye. Right, right. And I used to copy him almost Popeye as... Popeye was in the Journal American, I think. I uh, was yeah. in those days, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So my dad brought home these the comics to me, and I used to copy them, and they looked as good as the originals. Uh -huh. My dad brought it downtown to all the famous cartoonists, and they said, hey, your son might have a future as a cartoonist. Really? Absolutely. Is that... The Doodle wow. from the Bronx who became a famous cartoonist and a, a, a legend in his own mind <laughs> along the way. But really, that's how it all started. I was always doodling, and I loved comics, and... Uh, Did you... Were you working in comic books before you created Batman, or is that... Was yeah. that your entry into comics? No. Uh, actually, in 1936, when I was about 14 years old, or 15, I worked for Iger and Eisner, who had a comic book called Wow Comics. Mm -hmm. Wow Comics was one of the early comic books that printed original comic art, okay? Yeah. So I did some fill-ins for them, funny stuff, just laughs for $5 a page. The reason I didn't stay with them was I wanted $10 a page, and they wouldn't give it to me. Now, in 1936, believe it or not, $10 was a lot of money. I know. I know. So they said, no, uh, we, we passed. So I went over to DC Comics, uh, unfortunately for them. Could have given me Will Eisner that ten dollar, that five dollar <laughs> raise. You know, you lost out on a big thing, the Batman. And I went to DC doing fill-in comics, and then Whitney Ellsworth was an editor. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, the plot thickens. And he said to me one day, I said to him rather, how much are Superman, Joe Schuster, and Jerry Siegel making on the Superman comics? Uh, he said seventy-five thousand a year apiece. I was making five thousand a year for doing little fill-ins. He said, listen, Bob, could you do another super du superhero? I said, for that kind of money, you'll have it on Monday. This for that kind of money, you'd be the superhero. Well, you better believe it. I'll steal it somewhere. <laughs> and I went home, and lo and behold, I thought about all my childhood heroes when I was a kid in my world of fantasy, such as Zorro, Douglas Fairbanks yeah, Sr., yeah. Uh, the Mark of Zorro I saw as a child. I love the movies, the early movies, serials and I all remember. that. I remember. And I saw a movie called The Bat with Chester Morris. And he wore a bat costume, only he was a villain. Yeah. And that also imbued me with a, a, an inventor, an initiation for an inventive idea of Batman. And then the third influence was uh, Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine. Leonardo had a flying machine 500 years ago. Oh, I remember. The I first remember the glider, of it. Yeah. Uh, an orthopter. Yeah. 
I have a drawing in my book and I'll show it to you later. And so the three influences at that time were Zorro, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Bat. And on Monday, I came up with a very crude drawing of Batman, and I showed it to Whitney Ellsworth, and he said, that's terrific. I said, how much a page do I get? He said, $10 a page. That was my number then, $10 <laughs> a page. I thought I was a multimillionaire. I In didn't know what to do with all that money. Were. Yeah. I had a date. I took it to the Paramount Theater. I went dancing at the Edison <laughs> Green Room. We had dinner and two drinks, and the whole evening was $8. I took a subway home. I couldn't afford a cab. And but the rest is history, that Batman Batman, it, it, it seemed to take off at that time. Now, I know okay. you'll kill me if I don't let you start showing this book. Incidentally, are you impressed with our elaborate set here? That we no, took, I'm not. took it's a long time to create, a few pens, a book, a, a nice table. We did all of this for you, you know, Bob. You didn't varnish the table for my <laughs> appearance today. Come on, show us the book. Actually, it's a very bad <laughs> set, but, you know, Sam and I will make up for it with our charming personality. Okay. We worked so hard on this set. <laughs> Here we go. Well, anyway, this is Batman and Me. It's my autobiography. Finally came out. Well deserved from out of my infamy. And it's uh, by Bob Kane, and it has my entire life story. We have a, a lithograph in here of a Batman that I created. It's, uh, this is a special copy with a litho, one to a thousand. And along the way, I'd like to show you my big public of fans out there what Batman looked at like in his first appearance. Oh, that's great. Now, I have, I have one right here. It was very crude. I don't know if you get a close-up of this, but this is Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine stand. Yeah. And this was the first Batman prior to appearing in Detective Comics number 27. The influence is obvious. Uh, yeah. From, from Leonardo to... Leonardo Bob. to... My, my copying of Leonardo. This must be why Leonardo da Vinci and Bob Kane are almost always mentioned in the same breath. Have you noticed that? <laughs> in <laughs> my same breath, he means. But actually, Leonardo, wherever you are, I thank you for the residuals. <laughs> and they've been quite considerable. At any rate, that was the first Batman. Here's Batman's first appearance right here. Uh -huh. Crudely drawn. They always said I was a bad artist, which I was. But at any rate, it, it, it was the, in, the initial drawing of Batman which started the entire history. And it's always number one that makes the, the splash. You know that. And here's Batman with bat wings on him, very crude. And I had it attached to his arms. And the reason I changed it to a cape stand was that in, in, in action and fighting, it would be cumbersome fighting right, somebody. Right. See, it's attached here to his arms. At any rate, the book goes on and on. And for all you folks who want to buy my book, it's in all the comic book stores by Eclipse Comics. Harper will take it out on a revised edition. I've gotten my commercial in now. I also do fine art, Batman, of oil paintings. Here's a painting for the commemorating the Batman's 50th anniversary in 1989. And these are sketches of my oils, my fine art. That's a lithograph of Batman and Robin. Here's a Joker lithograph. It's really a fine book. And here's a, I did this for the movie. It's, it's Jack Nicholson right, and right. Batman. Batman number one, the cover, my early covers, and so forth. So this is a great book as a coffee table book. You can spill coffee on it or whatever you want to do with it. It has shiny paper, and I leave it to your imagination. If you don't like to read it, what you can do with my book. Tell anyway, me, if somebody buys a coffee table book, yeah, it's and called coffee table book and doesn't keep it on a coffee table, is the publisher mm -hmm. entitled to come to the house and, and take the book? Back? Actually, you it, sign a contract or something. It has to be a coffee table book on a coffee table with coffee on top. It has of to it. have coffee on top. They of use it. that as a as a uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, the, the napkins you put underneath the coffee. 